Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1 I, 38 female, married my husband, 43 male, six months ago. He has a seven year old son from his previous marriage. His ex wife, who was an alcoholic and absentee mom, tragically died when their son was three due to an overdose. I met my husband two years ago and he's been wonderful kind, caring, and all the things I could ask for in a partner. I am child-free by choice, but since his son was already older when we met, I was okay with it. His son is a really sweet and well-behaved kid. I've been upfront with my husband from the start that I'm not here to replace his mom. My role is more of a stepmom, cool aunt, and that's been working well for us. My stepson seems comfortable with this arrangement and things have been smooth between us. Recently, my husband and I moved back to his hometown into the house he left after his first wife passed. We've been busy renovating, cleaning and making it our own for the past few weeks. And then two weeks ago, my mother-in-law moved in temporarily because her basement flooded. And ever since, things have been tense. My mother-in-law has been making passive-aggressive comments disguised as advice about my cooking, cleaning and how I manage things around the house. She seemed especially upset when my husband would help out, like making me breakfast or folding laundry. She would make snide comments like, I did all this on my own, with no help from any man. I responded once by saying, I could too if I didn't have a job and that seemed to shut her up for a bit. A few days ago, my stepson got sick. My husband took two days off work to care for him and then hired a sitter for another day. I couldn't take time off because I had important presentations at work. It was one of those times when things just didn't work out in your favor, but we did the best we could. Yesterday, when I got home, my mother-in-law looked irritated and basically confronted me. She said I was putting too much effort into my career and that I was uncaring about my grandson. Then she dropped the bombshell that I needed to make a decision about my job. She suggested I consider whether I wanted to prioritize my job or being a mom and even added that my husband could handle the bills without me working anyway. I was exhausted and frustrated and I snapped. I told her, I'm not her grandson's mom, nor am I quitting my job I spent years earning my degree for and getting my master's to be where I am today. She seemed taken aback and retreated to her room. When my husband got home, he was angry about what happened. He told me he had already decided that his mom will have to leave as soon as her basement is fixed. Mother-in-law has been giving me the cold shoulder ever since. I'm just feeling conflicted about all this. On one hand, I'm relieved my husband has my back, but on the other, I'm worried about the tension this has caused and how it might affect my stepson. I already do over 90% of child care. I don't understand what more mother-in-law expects me to do. Any advice would be appreciated. Update. Things were quiet for like two days. We were too busy to deal with mother-in-law because stepson was still sick. However, in the meantime, my sister-in-law, who lives abroad, called my husband. She told him that their mom's basement wasn't flooded at all. Apparently, my mother-in-law had called her and said she was coming to fix our marriage for good. My sister-in-law also mentioned that mother-in-law has always hated me. And while she wasn't entirely sure why, she suspects it's because I'm working. She thinks mother-in-law feels insecure around me and believes my stepson deserves a proper mom, not someone she considers a part-time mom. My sister-in-law warned us that mother-in-law is a bit unhinged and tends to take things to extremes. She said she wasn't surprised that mother-in-law was trying to manipulate the situation but wanted to give us a heads up because things could get worse. So yesterday, my husband confronted her about everything. When he asked her directly about the supposed basement flooding, she finally admitted it wasn't true. He pressed her on why she lied, and that's when she kinda went nuts. She said he had married the wrong woman. She went on to say that he should divorce me so she could set him up with her friend's daughter, 
a good proper woman who knows how to do chores, take care of the house, and be a real mom to his son. I was upset when he told me. My husband thankfully was just as shocked and disgusted by her behavior as I was. He told her she needed to leave by Friday. No more excuses, no more games. He was firm and clear that she had overstepped in every possible way. So now we're waiting to see what happens. My mother-in-law is supposed to be gone by Friday, but who knows with her? I'm relieved my husband is on my side and isn't entertaining her nonsense, but I'm still on edge about the whole situation. It's exhausting dealing with her daily attacks and constant undermining. I'm so glad you have a supportive husband, OP. You have a good family and you're a great wife and stepmom. Your mother-in-law has absolutely no right to come into your home and tell you how to be a parent and be a wife, especially if she's not coming from a place of kindness, but from a place of archaic beliefs. The fact that she lied about her house flooding just so she could have the chance to disrupt your life says a lot about her. I'm glad even her son is disgusted by her behavior. She needs to leave and not come back without apologizing for trying to ruin your home and never trying to ever again. Story 2. Am I the a-hole for wanting an hour to rest after I get home from work? Girlfriend and I had our daughter last August. I did everything I could to make pregnancy easy for her, even agreeing to some completely ridiculous requests, such as sleeping on the couch and only using the bathroom on whichever floor she wasn't on. I was happy to try to make it even a little easier on her. After she gave birth, I kept at it, giving 110%. My schedule is basically to get up, go to work, come home, then immediately take over on baby duty. My girlfriend doesn't work and for the foreseeable future has no intention of returning to work. My job is one where I'm on my feet all day, lifting and moving things. I'm worn out by the end of the day. I've tried bringing up just having an hour to put my feet up and recover when I get home, and my girlfriend acted like I was asking for a kidney or something. Huge overreaction and bitching about all that she does. I get it. She's working too during the day. But come on, there's a slight difference between taking care of a baby and lifting and moving shit around for 8 plus hours a day. She also said that my drive home should be all the rest I need, and she doesn't even get that. I'm fairly certain the baby isn't awake for the whole day, and it's definitely not like she's cleaning here or anything. That shit also falls on me for some reason. I don't feel like an hour after work is too much to ask. My girlfriend obviously disagrees. I would never tell this, but honestly, I just think she got used to me kissing her ass and doing everything for her, and it's just become the new normal. I'm not okay with it anymore. Edit. I take over when I get home, and then it's me the rest of the night. There's been exactly one time where I got pissed. She woke me up to go feed the baby and made her go do it. Saturday, she's almost always gone for the day and most of the night. Sunday is when she will watch the baby while I clean up, a week's worth of mess and then one of us will go do the shopping and errands for the week. To everyone saying how I get to socialize with adults and pee while at work, she's choosing to stay at home. I honestly really wish she would return to work, if for nothing else than that she would no longer be able to act like such an effing martyr. You need to have a conversation with your girlfriend, OP. I commend you for treating her very well during her pregnancy and continuing to do so, but then again, this is something that you should do in the first place. Pregnancy, childbirth, and taking care of a newborn are stressful and exhausting. Your girlfriend is taking a break from hours of being with the baby anytime she can, and I can't blame her for it. But I also can't blame you for being exhausted from work and then getting back home to take care of a baby. I think you two need to hire a sitter if you can afford it. You can also take shifts. Anyway, talk to your girlfriend and figure out the best way to go about this. That would be great for both of you. Now for some comments. No a-holes here. You both have valid points here. You're physically exhausted, while she's probably mentally exhausted. Maybe you could compromise where the first hour you're home, you hold the baby and nothing else. I feel like that wouldn't be too much effort and you would get to sit back and watch TV while she gets an hour break from childcare. 
No a-holes here. This sounds like every couple the first year after their first kid. There's a reason the highest rate of divorce is in the first year after having the first child. You are physically exhausted, but she is equally exhausted between the physical and very intense emotional and mental aspects of parenting an infant all day. I don't think anybody here is trying to be an a-hole or has bad intentions. Being a couple with a newborn is just hellishly hard and will continue to be hard. No a-holes and no easy solutions found. I was going with no a-holes here until you said your job was harder than looking after an 8-month-old child. I feel like you don't understand the amount of work that goes into looking after an 8-month-old or get that while you're out all day talking to actual adults. She's with a child that can barely understand her and you should take the lack of socializing into account. I do think that you deserve a break after working all day, although maybe it would be better if she got an hour to chill when you got home and then she gave you an hour after that. I also would suggest dividing the chores again because it seems to be a cause of resentment for you. Story 3 Am I the a-hole? Fed children tofu nuggets, sister is raging. Throw away because I think sister and brother-in-law in question use Reddit. Maybe, I don't know. Basically, my sister and I are very different people and have had a historically rocky relationship. A lot of it comes from a biggish age gap. She's nine years older. But in general, we just have really different personalities and values. She got married eight years ago and now has a seven-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter, as well as full custody of her husband's 12-year-old twin sons from his previous marriage. I love my niece and nephews to death and genuinely enjoy hanging out with them, so readily volunteer to babysit whenever she and her husband need someone too. To be honest, there is still tension between the two of us and I don't particularly care for her husband but we keep things civil and whatnot for the sake of the kids. So yesterday, she and her fella are going on a date night and I volunteered to have the kids at my place. My girlfriend was also there and we all had dinner together. Now, I'm not fully vegan, probably about 80-90% plant-based. You can pry my cheesy scrambled eggs out of my cold dead hands. But my lady is, so naturally dinner was vegan. Specifically, I made tofu nuggets, which I make all the time, and are pretty delicious. Kids enjoyed them all and it was good. Until this morning, when I woke up to an angry text from my sister, saying that she and her husband were pissed that I fed the children soya without telling her. Now, nobody in that household has a soy allergy. I've cooked dishes for them with things like edamame and soy sauce before, and it's never been an issue. So I was confused and she basically started espousing a load of shite about how phytoestrogen is terrible, especially for the twins, and how they don't want them turning into soy boys. I tried to explain that that's not how any of this works. But she wouldn't have it and kept saying that she's their mother, so she decides what they eat. I guess I understand that, but her reasoning about banning tofu is so stupid to me especially when the kids liked the taste so much. I finished the conversation by saying, Girl, bye. You are doing the absolute most I'm done with this. And then she blocked me on Facebook. Am I being a bitch here? Like, I get parents gonna parent and I won't feed the kids tofu again if it's this big of an issue, but she's being unreasonable in my opinion. Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. If she wants to pull the... I'm the mom and I decide card. She should have told you before you fed them tofu. She can't reasonably get mad when she doesn't give you any heads up. However, if you want to keep having access to your nibblings, you should probably do what she says from now on, even if it is stupid and exaggerated. Not the a-hole. Your sister is a drama queen and a bigot. One meal isn't going to do anything unless it's something they are allergic to. Plus, if she knows that yours is a mostly vegan household, then she should have expected that soy might appear and asked that you not give them soy. Or better yet, send them food for them. I bet she freaked out because the kids really liked them and talked about them. Not the a-hole. Parents are allowed to decide what their kids eat, but they also have a responsibility to inform people who are feeding their kids of those rules beforehand. 
You knew she was vegan. You made vegan food. You didn't know she had an irrational rule against tofu. You used tofu. Your sister is being a real a-hole about this. Even if any of her concerns were factual, they aren't. A single meal of tofu nuggets is not going to derail a person's development. She could have said, Hey, I didn't mention this before, but please don't feed the kids tofu. I want to avoid soy as a main course. It's okay as a side or sauce. Instead, she flipped out. The Facebook block is just the petty cherry on this batshit vegan sundae.